I've been asked a lot to make this video. I have a feeling it's probably gonna take quite a few different tries or, or <clears throat> I have to do several different videos um, uh, about detailing supplies and what, what do I use. And you know, I really don't wanna battle you on this. Um, I, you know, here, here's the deal. Um, I use a certain grouping of products and it just comes from my experience. I really don't think there's any, I mean, I'm sure there's some bad ones out there, but you, you really can't choose wrong, uh, wrongly. Um, so don't get all bent out of shape if I'm not using what you're using. And, and to be honest with you, I'd love it if, if, you, um, if you make comments on the, on the channel and, and make suggestions that, that you say, hey Matt, you know, you're using XYZ and you should be using ZYX, you're crazy not to try it. I've had that happen to me several times, or many, many times over the years. Uh, uh, one classic example, Adam Super VRT, which I thought was the greatest thing in the world. Um, someone from the uh, Six Speed Forum suggested, dude, you gotta, you gotta try out CarPro Pearl, it's so much better, and he was right. Uh, and I could probably give you 20 other examples on, on, uh, on, on people telling me of other products um, that, that I just wasn't aware of. Um, so I'm going to sort of take you through this process of how, I, how I've found some of the stuff. I'm basically going to sit here and ramble like I always do. Uh, hopefully now you can hear me uh, since I have the, the, the new awesome wireless mic instead of me you know, mumbling because I tend to mumble. Um, but the what I what I'm going to do is I I have a tendency to go and fill up my bottles once every month or so. It's like a it's a it's like a therapy session for me. I uh, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed from you know some of my other posts and stuff. I'm a huge Villanova fan. I went to I'm a Villanova alum, and we lost last night. I try not to take it too seriously, but for whatever reason this year I I got serious about it again. I I kind of letting it go, let it go for a while. As you might imagine, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. So um, today is going to be a, uh, a therapy session after uh, Villanova going down to freaking NC State. Gosh, this is unbelievable. So anyway, so much for a Final Four run and me getting tickets and going and watching Villanova have a chance to win the national championship. Um, now it's uh, back to the drawing board, you know, 30, uh, 33 and three pretty much blows. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through this. I'm going to um, fill up all my bottles and sort of explain the thought process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go shelf by shelf. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So there's not really any rhyme or reason to this. Um, I'm also going to compile a list of all the stuff that I use. Uh, I should probably figure out a way to make some money off of all you guys buying all this crap that I'm, I'm using. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe someday I'll figure that out. But um, I'm going to take you through step by step all, all the different all the different products I use and why, and then you can argue with me later if you'd like. So the first bottle I have out here, by the way, this is a Adams funnel, which fits on pretty much any any bottle, makes it so much easier. You'll still spill a little bit, um, but I like this because it makes it easier. So the first. First product we talk about is uh, Griot's wheel cleaner. Now, this stuff, if I go way back to when I first started, um, you know, I, I got my start detailing. Let's see, I was thinking about this the other night. Um, I think I started detailing when I was about 20. Um, I had a Civic SI, I didn't know how to detail then. I knew how to wash a car, or at least I thought I knew how to wash a car. Uh, so I had an Electron Blue Civic SI, and then I traded that for, or sold that um, to get a um, 2002 uh, S2000, Honda S2000, AP1 S2000. And it was the, around the S2000 when I really started to, 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 to detail. Uh, believe it or not, I think I think what happened, what really got me started on this whole thing, is there one of my buddies had a there was a painter that worked for him, and uh, the painter was into detailing on the side, or so they they called it detailing. Um, I don't know if he corrected paint or not. I think he just clay barred and waxed things, and and to me it was like 
I was awestruck when I felt the pain after it was after it was clay bar. But my, for Christmas, my buddies chipped in, and you know we all bought stuff uh, uh, for each other. Um, this is just after I moved to Orlando, and uh, we had this this painter guy. He uh, he detailed my car, so I don't know. He charged like 150 bucks or something like that. And we were just awestruck at how the paint felt after the you know, the clay bar and the wax. And um, so then I started getting online and I did a little research and trying to figure out, well, shoot, if this guy can do it, he's a, um, why can't I do it? Um, and then that's when I discovered uh, Mother's Clay Bar and Detail Spray and uh, sort of evolved from there. Um, so that was around, I want to say 2002. So I guess I'm what, 13, 13, 14 years into detailing, something like that, which when you think about it, I am an old man now, but when I think about it, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. So, you know, I was just doing the typical buy whatever you can find at Advance Auto. And then what happened shortly after that, there was a mutual fund wholesaler. You know, I'm in wealth management. I, I, I have a practice here in the villages and a huge retirement community. And um, there was a wholesaler. They're kind of like pharmaceutical reps where uh, she it was actually a, you know, a female. She came in my store, you know, nothing against female wholesalers, but she came in, not my store, but my office. And um, we got to talking and, and, and somehow it came up that, you know, I had an S2000, her and her husband had an S2000. And um, she said, oh man, you need to, you need to check out Grillo's garage. I said, yeah, you know, whatever, I, you know, I got this figured out. Um, but, but I listened to her and I went right after she left and I typed in, you know, Grillo's garage on, on, you know, online. And sure enough, this place, like, it was like a calling. It was like it was meant, it was meant to be. So... I ordered the catalog, and for the over the course of you know two or three years, I bought every single every single product in the catalog at least once, if not five times. Um, some things worked, some things didn't, but every time they had something new, I try, bought it and tried it. And uh, the, yeah, the interesting thing at the time, you know, I had the the O2 S2000. I want to say. You know, so it's not like I had all this cash where I could buy all this stuff. So I was fitting it into my budget, if you will, um, of certain, trying to sort of build a collection. I think I was making like 45 or 50 grand at Merrill Lynch. I just started, uh, and I just, you know, was in the training program. And um, not to say 40 or 50 thousand bucks isn't a lot of money, but at the time, you know, it was wasn't didn't pay all of our bills as much as I would have liked. So we. I slowly built the collection, and that's when I started looking at the shelves and this sort of developing this whole idea of what I wanted my garage to look like someday if I ever became successful or ever had enough money to do it. So um, Griot's kind of became that one-stop shop, and I, I really love complete sets, you know, as you can tell from the, the way that, that my shelves look. And I, just ever since I was a kid, I loved complete sets of baseball cards or whatever, complete set of He-Man action figures or <laughs> whatever. If I had the Star Wars movies, I wanted all of them so I could look at them. Um, so I tried to build the whole Griot's collection and it was great. It was a one-stop shop. There were some tutorials, a few tutorials. Uh, that's where I learned how to machine polish uh, with a crosshatch path and um, uh, learned how to you know, clay bar paint properly. Then I didn't, we'd call it correction, but polish paint with the different stages. Uh, of course, I was scared to death of using any of the heavier polishes because I thought I would ruin the paint. Um, with the, the Ogrio system was polished one, two, three, four. And, and so over the course of two or three years, I built this collection of Grios products. And I used it virtually almost exclusively other than a few things that I, I'd find a few things here and there that, that I thought was interesting. I, I'll show you one of like mother's hyper dressing I discovered after screwing up using Griot's engine detail spray that basically ruined the way or the look of my engine block on my S2000. Um, so whatever you do, don't use that aerosol can stuff. It, it looks great for a little while, but then ends up attracting more dirt than it's worth and then you can't really get it off. So I built this Griot's collection. If 
Fast forward, I had a, let's see, what happened? I, I had that O2S2000 and I had a 07 Yamaha YZF-R6, which I had for like a few hundred miles. Uh, yeah, a motorcycle, which was a, that's a whole nother story. But when I sold that stuff, I had a short stint where I decided I'm going to be responsible and I'm gonna give up cars and I bought an O2 Acura RSX. So I sold my S2000, sold my motorcycle, sold all my car parts, and um, I was still detailing, so I had the, the RSX pretty dialed in. I actually got wheels, and you know, newer wheels and everything on it. It, looked, it was decent, but I didn't modify it. And then somehow I convinced my wife, I think I, I graduated the program, so I had that car for several years. I graduated the program the training program at Merrill Lynch, and then I got another S2000. And then that's when the, when the real detailing started. So I completed, by that time I had pretty much completed my Griot's collection, uh, and um, then started, uh, you know, sort of really, I never, I still have never really done anybody else's car. I've done a few cars, but um, usually only do my own. So, what I just filled up here, just, just to cue you in, Grio spray on wax. Uh, there's lots of good spray on wax. Is it really, I don't think it really matters. Um, I've used this forever, but I use this um, after a wash. So, Grio's wheel cleaner. Hold on one second, let me close this door. So that's the Grio story and how I sort of got on Grio stuff. And, and you know, why I still have sort of a soft spot for some of their stuff. Um, Griot's is a great one-stop shop, amateur, you know, sort of prosumer uh, detailing supply company. So they make, they make some good stuff. Um, some stuff isn't so good. Um, but if you're looking for a place to get started and you don't know where, they have lots of great resources. The catalog's awesome. It still comes in the mail. I still like to get that catalog in the mail and I go online and figure out what I don't own and, 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 and add stuff to the, to the collection. So that's my, my long drawn out Griot story. Um, and we'll come back to sort of how I've gotten to the stage I'm at today and I'm sure that'll continue to evolve. So Griot's green wheel cleaner, I stopped using this for a while and switched to uh, one, uh, actually switched to Sonex um, Full Effect, uh, the stuff that turns purple. And um, I've recently, about a year ago, found the even better solution over, over the Sonax, which is 1Z Einzet um, color tech. So I have a gallon of that here. Um, I'm not even going to worry about filling that up. Um, but the 1Z uh, is, is better than the, I think, much, much, much better than the Sonax. The Sonax is good. It works great. It gets the wheels clean, but it doesn't give you any sort of lather. And it just makes me feel better when I have some suds or some soap that's, that's building up on the wheels. I know that's probably ridiculous, but um, I like the 1Z better than the, than the Sonax. So the reason why I came back to Gria's wheel cleaner, green wheel cleaner, is um, I already had the bottle, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I had the bottle, and um, uh, when I got carbon ceramics, I finally found the perfect wheel cleaner. By the way, this is a, obviously a Griot's sprayer, because I like their sprayers. Um, I finally found the best wheel cleaner there is, in my opinion, and now I don't need it anymore. So um, I just went back to the Griot's green stuff. I probably don't even need this. I could just use soap and water if I wanted to on the wheels because the carbon ceramics don't, don't have any buildup. Um, but I do like to, I don't know, it's probably more nostalgia than anything, but uh, I do like to use a wheel cleaner on the wheels. So Griot's green wheel cleaner, 1Z Einzet, um, Color Tech. Again, I'm gonna make a list of all this stuff so you can see it all in one spot. Maybe not by the time I put this video up, but, but I will do that for you at some point. Um, so wheels, those are the two wheel cleaners I use. Um, since we're talking about wheels, uh, rubber cleaner. This is Griot's rubber cleaner. I've used a bunch of different all-purpose cleaners, tried a bunch of different um, stuff, and have come back to this. And this is, I, I believe, is the best rubber cleaner. Um, to use on a periodic basis, so to use one, if you do a wash once a week or once every other week. I use this on my tires, and I use this you know, quite often. Um, so I've come back to this from using all different all-purpose cleaner products, 
And uh, and and I I honestly believe you know I don't I don't believe that Grio's wheel green wheel cleaner is the best wheel cleaner out there, um, but it is you know it's it good serves my purposes, um, but I do believe that the um, that the Grio's rubber cleaner is worth the money. It's really not that expensive in comparison to some other stuff. So I, as you can see, I usually keep gallon refills and just keep filling these bottles. These are the original bottles that I started buying back in sort of 0203. Um, so they've last forever. I just replaced all my sprayers for the first time. So the sprayers started to get a little squeaky. Um, so they lasted 10 years or so, 10 years plus. Um, so I, I highly recommend them. I really like the Griot sp spray bottles. I like the way they look. They fit in the, the shelves and everything mainly, but, uh, but they, do, they do spray pretty well. So I keep the gallons around to refill the smaller bottles. And it's just a little bit cheaper way to buy is you know, buy the gallons and, and fill them up. Uh, I was talking about here, uh, Griot Spray on Wax. That's the fourth bottle here. Um, so these are the four bottles that I would normally use in a wash, um, a car wash, normal weekly car wash. So what I do is clean the wheels, clean the tires, uh, put those bottles away. Um, then after the wash, after the foaming and the wash, blow the car off. Um, as I'm drying, so when the, the water's still on the paint, I'll spritz or spray some Griot's spray on wax on the car. Uh, and then I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting another little, little, little layer of, um, of wax uh, on top of the wax that's already on the surface. It's just, again, it makes me feel better. I don't know how much it actually works. It does help the car dry a little bit better. You have to do one panel at a time because it will dry and leave spots. Um, so you have, to, you have to do it more quickly. Again, I'm sure there's better spray on waxes, uh, but I've used this for years. I know how it works. I know um, how much to spray on the car before drying it. Um, so I've just, I've sort of become accustomed to it. And it does give you a nice extra shine, like layer of protection on the car, if you will. Um, so those are the first four, my first shelf, the first four products that, that I use. Let me get the other ones out and we'll talk about those. Four spray bottles, the next shelf is um, a lot of the interior stuff. Um, actually, it's all interior stuff. So first, and I'm now realizing, I didn't think I used this much Griot stuff, but I still use a lot of Griot's. I guess more of the maintenance stuff that I'm using is, is Griot's, um, or the polishing and detail, the real you know, paint correcting stuff. I'm using different, different products. But um, this is uh, Griot's window cleaner, works great. I think window cleaner is just some sort of derivation of alcohol and water anyway, so I don't think it really matters. But uh, it's tint safe, works on you know tinted windows. I use it in the house all the time. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, lasts a long time. Um, so I use uh, Griot's, I'm sure Adams or 1Z or some auto geek derivation. I'm sure it, it all works just the same. Um, second one is uh, Griot's interior cleaner. Now I really do like this. Um, I've also used 1Z cockpit, I think it's called. Um, uh, their stuff is good too. The Griot's, it works really well. It's, it's weird, it has like some, some has a capability to cover up scratches and things like that if, or, or marks on the plastic. Uh, I've been using that for years. It doesn't really smell like anything, it just, just works. Uh, and then I, who knows, I'm sure there's better carpet cleaner, but in the interest of matching, being matchy matchy, this Griot's stuff does the job for me. So like I said, this exercise of filling up the bottles makes me happy. <laughs> Maybe that gives you an indication of uh, the level of crazy we're dealing with here. But this is fun to me. I'm sure there's a few of you out there that can uh, understand what I'm talking about. That have my brand of crazy. So you got the window cleaner, carpet cleaner. Um, Leather care spray. Uh, this is Lexol in here. Um, I know I'm supposed to be switching to leather eek, my buddies tell me. Uh, you know, I really don't care. Um, I keep getting asked to do an interior detail. I, I don't know that I'm a very, um, very good source on interior detailing just simply because I don't mess up my interior. I'm, all I need to do is vacuum the little bit of dirt that gets on the carpet, um, little pebbles and things like that, and then I take care of the leather. So I will do a video on, on leather care and how I, how I do that. And it's really a pretty simple process using um, Leather Master stuff. 
and then once every two months I go and spray some Lexol on it. Um, I'm sure it would matter more if I had cars that I kept longer. Um, hopefully these I'll have for a while, so I do probably need to do, take a little better care. Uh, but my interiors don't get dirty. My kids aren't allowed to wear shoes in the car. I, I do let my wife wear shoes in the car, but um, so I, you know, so they're not kicking the back of my seat. Uh, well, I guess my son would kick. My daughter's too too young. Um, but I don't, um, I don't have big problems. I wipe down the dash, the interior cleaner. I clean the windows. Well, this is one thing you will want to get, which I think is super cheesy, but works really well. It's this. Um, what is this thing called? It's called a Glassmaster Pro, um, and they actually put a microfiber uh, glass towel. This is really helpful, not so much for the outside, but the inside window. You're trying to get down in the cracks. So what I'll do is spray off the windows, and I'm sure I'll do a video of this sometime. I'll spray off the windows, wipe it, buff it off, or wipe it off with a, you know, with a window towel, and then the leftover sort of residual, we'll use this, this tool to get up in there. Um, you can buy them at Auto Geek, at Griot's. It's super cheesy and almost as seen on TV type junk, but it really does work. So those are some of the interior products that I use. Like I said, I'm not a particularly, particularly um, great resource on interior detailing. I know, I know a, a, enough. I don't own an extractor, a steamer, and I don't own some fancy... Um, um, vacuum. I just use a, or the free one I got with my stupid Auric uh, vacuum that I bought. Seems to do do a good job. Or I'll get out the shop vac occasionally. I don't get the shop out vac out very much because I don't keep it in the garage. It's just a little too big for that. So the interior stuff, I just keep it simple. I'm sure there's better stuff out there, but I don't, I don't need anything crazy. That I keep my engine dressing in, uh, and the engine dressing is a, I believe I mixed this for satin finish, a three to one. So three to one water. Actually, I think I do a, a natural finish four to one. Um, so that way it doesn't get too, too shiny. Uh, but this is called Meguiar's Hyper Dressing. I'll probably have this for the rest of my life. Uh, but I use this on an engine detail. Uh, so, and there's been some controversy on one of my channels or one of my videos on the channel. I pressure wash out or hose out the, the engine bay, use some various brushes and some, some Griot's uh, engine cleaner. And, um, and then I spray this on after the fact. And, um, I don't see why you can't get an engine wet. I mean, it does get wet when it rains, right? Um, now, the battery and the fuse box and all that stuff you would want to cover, uh, but they're in the trunk, so what's, what's the big deal? Um, you know, you don't want to be sitting there blowing and hosing the crap out of the, out of the engine bay, but I, I do it, and it, it's been doing it for since I got started in this game. So it works, and you just have to be, just don't be stupid. Um, but what I do, this stuff is a four to one mixture. Um, like I said, I'll have this for the rest of my life. I'm not sure if you can buy this in a smaller container. It's, you can see it's almost getting some mold or something in there. Um, this is how much I've used in, I think I've been using this for like eight years. <laughs> so you might want to uh, buy a smaller container unless you're a, a pro. If you're a pro, you probably shouldn't be watching my videos. Um, it's Griot's Engine Cleaner. Uh, again, this is just another sort of all-purpose cleaner. I use this in Adam's all-purpose cleaner. I'll show you that in a second, so it really, really doesn't matter. Um, this is Griot's rubber and vinyl dressing. All this really is is say like Adam Super VRT diluted. Um, I've had this for since the beginning. Um, this isn't nearly as good as, as some of the other stuff. It just this was I think this was like 40 bucks or something. So. I've been uh, too, uh, too much of a baby to throw it away, but you can use this for trim, you can use it for tires, you can use it for anything. And I did use it for a while, um, but this is how much I used in probably the six years or so that I was using this. Um, it's, uh, it's not bad stuff. And then this is just uh, isopropyl alcohol. This is a 20% mixture of water, and, uh, and I always write IPA on there of uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol, roughly 20%, something like that. Um, this is um, aerospace protectant uh, 303. Uh, you can use this on interiors, plastics, rubbers, anything. I don't think I even know if this bottle sprays because I don't think I ever used it. 
but I have it just in case someday I needed it. Um, I used to use this a lot on convertible tops on when I had an S2000. I had a hard top most of the time, but I would use that uh, when I, if I ever took it off, which was rare. So my head sticks out of the, out of the roof. Uh, Adams APC, and these are the um, Quasar double spray. So when you, they spray when you pull and you release. I hate them. I, the, they, they always come loose here, no matter how tight, how tight I make this part. So as I'm spraying, eventually it pops loose and I have to retighten it. I think Greeley's does that a little bit too. So in fairness, it's not, it's not the world's worst thing. Um, I just don't like, I, I, and then I know these are the top bottles and what all the pro detailers use. It's just, just, I like the Griots better. I, and, and the reason why I have a couple of them is I, I bought, I decided I'm going to replace all my bottles with these. I bought half a dozen of them or so, maybe more. And I've thrown most of them away. I just don't, I just don't like them. Um, but I feel obligated to keep a couple of them. Um, this here is a mixture of, um, optimum no rinse and water. Uh, if you watched the last video, I used the boatload of this stuff for um, as a detailing lubricant. It's a lot cheaper than buying Adam's detail spray or some other detail spray. Um, I, you know, actually, I, I on my GT3, I don't cheap out and I just use the, the high-end stuff. Um, but this, you know, it really doesn't matter when you're doing the auto scrub or the clay bar. You just need something to lubricate the surface, and you're going to use a ton of it. So, I um, I use this. Uh, this stuff. What I usually use is um, uh, Nanoskin Glide, uh, but I bought some no rinse for I don't know why. I, you know, it was one of those moments of weakness when I was on Auto Geek or uh, on Detailers Domain, one of them, and I just added it to the cart. So I have it. So I've just been trying to use it up um, while I'm while I'm doing any sort of detail. I don't use this spray any other time, but when I'm when I'm doing a a, a paint correction or a decontamination. So next shelf, um, then back down at the sort of the bottom. Again, Adam's Detail Spray, I use this all the time. Um, since I've switched back to a wax um, from a, I was using Sonax Polymer Net Shield for a while uh, on cars. I just found that Sonax doesn't do as well in Florida with a massive amount of pollen. So every year there's like a two month window where it, the pollen just sort of neutralizes the, the, the Sonax. It doesn't take it off the paint. Uh, but it, it's, it just stops beating. So I think it, I know something about the technology, it clogs up the particles. So um, I stopped using Sonax. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, again, gives you a little bit more synthetic look to the paint. Um, but I was using that on my S4 because I hated that freaking car and I didn't, I didn't care much about it. Uh, I did take great care of the paint. It was a lease, but I own these two cars. But um, anyway, that's a whole other story for another day. I just hated that uh, B8 S4. It just felt like I was driving a uh, 450 horsepower Camry around. Um, so Adam's Detail Spray, I use this for all kinds of stuff. If, like I've got some bugs on the GT3 that I'll, um, I, might, I might get off. I'm probably gonna wash a GT3 because I drove it a lot yesterday. Um, but Adam's Detail Spray smells like magic. I mean, if you, uh, if you haven't taken a whiff of this stuff, it smells like delicious cotton candy and bubble gum all in one one formula so good stuff uh, much better than 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 some of the other detail sprays I've used um, car pro pearl this stuff I can't stress you enough how awesome this I use it straight up I don't dilute it uh, I use it on my tires fantastic you have to do it every time you don't have to do it every time but my tires nice satin finish it's just say no to gloss, the shiny crap that people put on their tires, it flicks all up the paint. You don't want shiny tires, you look like an idiot. Uh, they get dusty and, and it's just, just don't do it. It's just, it's just stupid. You know, you get me all fired up. Um, either you say Adam Super VRT or pony up and buy the good stuff. Uh, this pearl will probably last me the next five years. Um, I actually took the top off the Adam Super VRT and put it on here because they don't give you, a, in the one liter bottle, they don't give you a, a dispensable top. It's just a, a cap. Um, buy this stuff, it's awesome. My, f this is, I'm, I'm almost certain, this is my favorite detailing product, CarPro Pearl. And it's actually turned me on to CarPro, so now I want to buy all kinds of CarPro stuff. Um, and then Optimum No Rinse, don't buy this. Just buy Glide and use it with your auto scrub. 
Um, it's, it's cheap, it's easy. If you don't have the cash to buy Adam's Detail Spray, you can make your own detail spray. Just buy, you can buy this crap, but it's not anything special. It's not bad, it's not good. It's just sort of like an all-purpose detailer that you can, you can use. All right, so moving up the line here. Now we're starting to talk about polishing. And I, forgive me, I have all of these. I don't actually use all of these, um, but I have them because I like complete sets. I think I, I mentioned this in some of my other uh, posts or some of my other, uh, my, maybe I mentioned in my journal, so you guys may not, may not look at that. Um, but we got Menzerna. I love Menzerna polishes. Um, I like them better than Meguiar's. I like them better than Sonax. Um, I like them better than, those are the only, I think the only two alternatives in my opinion. Uh, would be you would use uh, Meguiar's. I have it uh, uh, 105, 205. I think I have it. Maybe I only have 105. Yeah, I have 105, not 205. I have D300. Um, we'll go over that in a second. Um, I use pretty much exclusively Menzerna polishes. And I'll give you the sort of the backstory on this. So in 2011, I was thinking about this before I made the video. Maybe I should start actually writing down what I'm going to say and it, it might come across a little bit better. But I, it was back in 2011, I'd gotten my E92 M3, so it was Civic SI, uh, AP1 S2000, uh, so no 2 S2000. Um, then it was RSX Type S, and then I got back into cars again. It was about six or eight months, and I tried to be a responsible human. Um, got back and got a Honda S2000, AP2 S2000 in 2007, uh, and then I got a, um, after that I got a, a B8S4, no, 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 I take that back. I got a E92 M3, so my life's dream, you know, I had the, the, my perfect vehicle, the E92 M3, I, the, the 911 was way off in the distance at that point, I didn't realize I would get it so, so soon. Um, so in 2011, I want to say I was making like a hundred grand. I'd, you know, I'd gotten to six figures for the first time, uh, and uh, and part of my reward was that I got the you know my dream car. I ordered it specifically exactly the way I wanted, and um, and and got that. So I, I convinced my wife I needed to keep my S2000, and then I had my my E92 M3, which I, I love to death. So what happened was, in completing the car story, then I. Placed the S2000, got a B8S4 as my daily driver when we had our son. I convinced my wife I needed that. And then I replaced the E92 M3 with a 911 Carrera S and then uh, got rid of the, um, the uh, S4 and got the F80 M3 and then um, got the, uh, the GT3. So that, that's my car story with a few uh, crappy American cars in the middle or in the beginning there before I, I, I actually got to, to, to the SI. So, in finishing up this story, this super exciting, uh, real uh, um, enthralling story here, I had the E92 M3. It was like, I don't know, I had four or 5,000 miles on it, and it was love bug season. And if you're not from Florida, you don't know about love bugs, but love bugs are like the, they, they almost made me move out of Florida. Uh, Central Florida. They don't really have them as much in South Florida, um, but they're these little bugs that as soon as you breathe on them, they explode uh, and, and they get all over your car and they come twice a year. They come in May and they come in September uh, and they, so the beginning and end of the summer and it, it basically destroys your paint if you don't get them off within a couple of days. And uh, there's all kinds of morons out there that talk about, uh, well, um, you should, uh, you should use dryer sheets or, or, or spray Pam don't don't spray Pam on your freaking paint you morons don't do that um, you, you ruin the paint um, so the way to get them off is you wash them off with water you know soap and water so you use soap get the dirt off and then you'll have to go back with like a bug mitt and, and clean them off so wax your car and get off your lazy rear end and clean it otherwise just leave it on there and it'll just ruin your paint so what happens is the the acidity of the bug guts etch the paint and ruin it. I've never ever had an etch mark on my car and it's not really that hard as long as you take them off sort of weekly or a couple of times a week it's not a big deal. So anyway what happened was I what I would do sometimes is I would spray off the front of the car 
um, wipe it off. This is before I was as anal as I am today and before I knew about swirls and scratches and um, I knew they were there but I didn't really know much about them. I just assumed that was part of the deal. Uh, what I would do is I would use a little bug mitt, one of these little yellow things. I still use them today. But I would use a little bug mitt like this, put my hand in it, and I would just get the hose out and just kind of kind of wipe off the, you know, the bugs and kind of work them off. And from my experience, bumpers, the plastic area doesn't get as swirled out as, as, the, as the metal parts will. Plus you can't see it as much anyway. So I would kind of walk around with the hose and, and wipe off the bugs and I would inevitably get sort of the water on the, on the top of the car and I wouldn't wipe it off because I knew that was, wasn't smart to do. Um, but what happened was I left some, some water on the car and it dried and it left hard water spots on my life's dream, my E92 M3. So I had hard water spots all over the hood and naturally my third, first thought was, well, I'll get the, gri excuse me, the Griot's polish shell and uh, well, first I said I'll get the clay bar out and the clay bar it, so I was still using all griots at the time. And sure enough, um, the clay bar didn't work and then the Polish 3 didn't work. So then I went down, down to Polish 2 and that didn't work. And then Polish 1 didn't work. And if you've never used griots polish and if you still swear by it, just throw, get, walk over to the trash and just throw it in there right now, trust me. It's garbage. It, it's, maybe they've gotten a little bit better since I've used it six, five, six years ago, but it's junk. You put it on the paint, it doesn't do anything, and then you're grinding it off because it's just the formula just isn't as good as these superior products. So as much as I love Griot's and Richard Griot and the company and how great I think it is, the polish is terrible. Um, and the polishing system is designed to be idiot proof, so I know that they know this, uh, but they, they don't want to give some aggressive polish and have people blowing through their paint because they're idiots. So what I did was I got on Detailing Bliss and I discovered Detailer's Domain. Uh, and, uh, and, and Detailing Bliss is Detailer's Domain's forum. And I started searching around, you know, how can I get rid of water spots? And I came across, which is up on the top shelf there, um, Super Intensive Polish, SIP 1500. Uh, and someone talked about using a polishing pad uh, and with SIP uh, 1500 and then follow up with a SF 4500 as a finishing. And sure enough, I threw the, um, I threw the, the, the SIP 1500 uh, Super Intensive Polish on there and boom, water spots gone. I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. So I ended up following up and doing the whole car and I got out, I don't know, I want to say 90, 90% of the little scratches because for a little short stint there, someone I'd read somewhere that you were supposed to use a boar's hair brush. Don't use a boar's hair brush. It ruins your freaking paint. Um, I thought, you know, I'd read somewhere that that's what you need to do when I got my M3. So sure enough, I had all these little straight line scratches all over the car, even though I had an expensive boar's hair brush. Those things don't work. I've tried, been there, tried that. The other thing I used to use was a squeegee, you know, to squeegee off the paint. I thought that was smart. Well, that's a terrible idea too. Don't do that either. Uh, so as you can see, you know, I, I have learned and screwed up every way possible. I can give you 50 other examples of screwing up, um, like blowing through the door handle on my M3. So my poor M3, although it looked pristine and looked great, um, if I had it today, I'm almost glad I don't own it anymore because of all the lessons that I learned on that thing. Even though it was 100% better than what a normal person who owns an E92 M3's car would look like, to me, I know what I did and know the mistakes that I made and, and I know the paint isn't as perfect as, as these two are pristine. So these are my sort of evolutionary steps of, of detailing. So um, that was my foray into Menzerna. And I tried all these different stuff to get off the water spots. And literally, I'm not kidding you, it was like, like five seconds, boom, water spots gone, where I spent hours trying to get it off with, with other, other means. Uh, so I was sold out on Manzerna, and they've continued to improve their line. Uh, I have the 4500, which is a ultra finishing or super finishing polish, ultra finishing polish with very little cut. I have SF4000. I use this more than anything. If you watch the last detail, I did uh, SF4000 with a little bit stiffer pad, like a, a regular polishing pad rather than a finishing pad, just to get out um, if there were any scratches. Uh, and it finishes down really nicely as you sort of release pressure. I use this more than anything. Because once I've done a compounding of the car after I bought it, if I needed to, I didn't need to do the, the whole GT3, 
Um, I didn't compound the M3 either because they did a good job of the performance delivery center, not squirrel, swirling it out. But if you know you compound the car once, and as long as you don't screw it up, you shouldn't ever have to compound or, or have you polish the car again. This is the power lock that we used in the last detail, Menzerna power lock. Um, I like this stuff. Um, I don't like it on its own. It goes on smooth as butter. You put it on, you wipe it off after, after it hazes over, but it wipes off without even using any pressure. Um, great stuff. It only lasts about two or three months from my experience, so it doesn't, doesn't give you the same longevity that, um, that a wax or, or some of the other stuff does. So it is a, this is a synthetic sealant, uh, and you know, it'll basically ruin whatever pad you put on because you can't, water won't wash it out. Um, so, so you might as well throw your, your application pad away. And then I, I do use them in top inspection occasionally. I actually don't like this stuff as much. Uh, this is for the step after you polish, go out, wash the car, then you would spray this to get whatever remaining residue or oils off the paint in preparation for, um, for a polish. So instead of using this, I use IPA. It's just, you know, IPA is cheaper and I actually think it works better. I'm actually gonna buy a gallon of CarPro eraser and see how that works. All right, let the jokes begin. Here's the remaining part of the Manzerna line. So you're what, a couple hundred bucks into all this stuff. 3,000, 2,500, 2,000, 1,000, uh, 1,500 fits in between here. So there's the 1,500. And I, I don't, <laughs> I haven't used the 1,500 since. Probably I did my M3 uh, and then FG400. So. I use FG400, which is their newest, latest sort of technology, uh, micro abrasive technology that break, breaks down, but it's the most cut um, that they, it's even more cutting than the rubbing compound, the, the 1000. Um, I'd probably use 1000 if I was gonna fix someone's headlights or something, so I'd wet sand it with a 3000 grit or so, uh, and then polish it with a 1000, follow up with something lighter like a, like a 4000 or, or 4500, something like that. But the FG400 is what I use if I'm gonna compound a car. Um, if the FG400 doesn't work, which it didn't on the rear wing of the, of the, the uh, GT3 when it was scratched out or wet sanded or wet sanding marks, um, that's when I used um, D300. So in my world of cutting, I've never needed anything more than this. You can get some heavier stuff than this, but I would sort of rank it like this, FG400, then D300. Now D300 is designed to be used with a microfiber pad. This is from um, Meguiar. So this is good stuff to have laying around if you need it. Um, so this is a, and I only have microfiber cutting pads. I don't use microfiber for finishing. I use foam pads for finishing. So this is a Meguiar, super high quality. Um, microfiber cutting pad, and this is their microfiber cutting system, and this stuff really works well. Phil used to use this a lot at Detailers Domain, I don't know how much he uses it now, but when it came out, it was the, it was the real deal. Uh, and then their old M105, so this is something I could use with a microfiber pad as well, and I'll usually use FG400 with a microfiber pad, a cutting pad. Um, so these three I would use and sort of rank from least cut to most cut. Um, and I've never, I have this, but I've never actually used it. Um, there's also a 205, but rather than 205, I would probably use 1500 or, or 3000 or something like that. So I like the men's earnest stuff better. So that's the line of polishes. Um, you don't need 3000, 2500, 2000. You probably don't even need 1500. So if it were me and you, well, if you weren't me, let's say, and you wanted to spend, you know, a few hundred bucks on getting started, buy the 4000 buy the FG400 um, and uh, is this 400 or 500? I always forget. 400, yeah, FG400. Um, buy some microfiber pads, buy some foam pads and you're, you'll be good to go. I have all this stuff more for show than go. I don't know that I'll actually use some of these polishes, but I have the nice fancy shelves in this fancy looking garage, so I'll be uh, candid with you and then I doubt I'll ever even crack the seal on these uh, intensive polis uh, 2000. Who knows? It's nice to have. You might, might have a, an instance where a certain paint, I, again I don't do anybody else's car so I know what works on my two cars. Uh, I guess the only time I may use it if I get a different car at some point. So th those are the, uh, that's the polishes that I use. Alright, here's the next shelf. Already talked about nanoskin glide. This is a concentrate. 
Um, you make it for auto scrub seven to one. So in other words, you guess like I do because I don't remember how to perform a proper dilution from chemistry class. Then I have all the wolf stuff. So I guess this is kind of a moot point unless we figure out a way to get this imported. I might actually start dealing. I, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I don't, I'm not a dealer on this stuff, but. Um, you have nano skin trim sealant. These are nano technologies and then glass guard, glass sealant. So these are the two that I love. Awesome. I would use them if I could get them. I'm almost out. I've got this much left of the glass guard and this much left of the trim coat. So I'm going to try to figure out how to get these. This stuff is junk, rim shield, shine and seal, hard body. You don't want any of this crap. The hard body's junk. Um, the the, the uh, rim shield is, I don't even know if it works. The, the, you know, the polish stuff is not too bad. It's a little thing of polish. I think this is uh, 130 bucks worth of stuff, so I can't bring myself to throw it away. And it looks fancy on my shelf, so I keep it just in case someday I decide it's not junk. I'm sure I'll end up throwing it away like I always do, but I've probably thrown away more detailing supplies than, than the average you know, pro has, uh, has bought. So <laughs> yeah, be smart about this. Don't buy those. If you can get a hold of these, if you're in Europe, buy these. And if you're in Europe and you can get them, I think they're out of Hungary, um, get them and uh, call, uh, shoot me an email and uh, I'll pay the VAT or whatever. I'll buy three or four containers of each from you. Um, so see if you can make a few bucks off of me and, and find these from, for me and, and get them. So that's my, uh, that's my shameless plug to you uh, Europeans that watch some of these movies. Interior, interior detailing that I would actually call detailing other than there's cleaning a secret and it's these little guys right here uh, leather masters kit um, I think I'm missing one yeah, yeah there's one more bottle here that I I got two more bottles let's see here oh no I got it right these are just replacement bottles so these two are I bought some extra I hate detailing the interior and, and I, I don't have to because I don't mess it up. So um, I always put this off and I only do this maybe once a year if that. Um, but um, what I have is strong cleaner, soft cleaner, so I guess I should put it in this order. And then you've got leather vital and leather care protection cream, so it's a system. Um, so what I would traditionally do is uh, vacuum and then I'd use an interior cleaner. Uh, and then I use these little sponges in here somewhere. There's a little kit I got from uh, Detailer's Domain. So I have these little sponges that came in the kit. And so what you'll do is you put some cleaner on there. I'm going to do a video of this. And you kind of foam it up. And then you just sort of work out and clean out the leather. I almost always use the, the strong cleaner rather than the soft. Um, I don't think the strong cleaner is all that strong. It doesn't even really smell like anything. Um, so I would do that to the steering wheel or the dash or you know anything that's leather. You know, clean the especially the, the armrest gets it a good cleaning. And then after that, you do leather vital. Um, uh, leather vital you need to be careful with. And like I said, uh, for the fifth time, I'll make a video of this. Um, but leather vital, uh, you got to be careful because it gets streaky. So you need to make sure. And I'll, I'll show you how to how to handle that. I did a whole black interior before of my, my S4 and, and it, the whole thing was all streaky and then it was hard to get out. So you need to be careful with that. Um, and then leather care protection cream is the last step. And then I would follow up occasionally, mainly when I just wanted my interior to smell decently, I would do the, um, uh, the Lexol. And I know I'm, I should switch to Leather Eek, but don't yell at me at that. I just bought a darn gallon of uh, Lexol, so I'm stuck with it. I think it was like 50 bucks with a gallon. So I'm sure the difference between Lexol and Leather Eek are not worth 50 bucks. I guess the problem is I'm going to have that Lexol for the rest of my life. <laughs> so maybe I should just throw it away and start over. Okay. So here's another random pile of stuff. Uh, glass polish, I'm throwing this in the trash. Sorry, I know some of you probably want it. Rios, but glass polish doesn't actually work. 
uh, plastic polish. I guess I'll leave, I'll keep this stuff. I've never actually used it. I don't even know if I ever taken off the, yeah, I guess I did. Um, I don't know, uh, I should probably throw that away too. Um, this stuff is good, rubber prep, Grios rubber prep. Um, you can use this or you can use Stoner's Terminator. So this is a nice combo to, you know, if you buy a, a new car and they put that gloppy crap on your, on your tires and you want to get it off, um, Terminator's a good thing to use um, or um, rubber prep. I, I don't know which one, I think I like rubber prep better, but it does a good job of just cleaning off some of the junk and I, I, I use rubber prep a lot of times on the trim. Um, I think it's probably just some form of alcohol it smells a little different though. I don't know what the, what the ingredients are but, or what the chemicals are. So those are two things that kind of work together. Griot's adhesive remover, you know, just get some goo gone, but I like the bottle because it matches. Um, Adam's in and out spray. I bought a case of this crap and I've never, never ever used it. It's good stuff for like black trim and stuff, but I, I just don't use it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, so I wouldn't buy it if I were you. I still have a little VRT left over. I should probably just throw that away. In fact, I'm going to do that since I'm using CarPro Pearl. I know you guys are probably cringing at me throwing this stuff away, but um, colonite, here's the famous colonite 845. I've used, I've had this since, I don't know, when, 2011, and I've used this much of it. It's like $12. Awesome, awesome stuff. Way too good for what, it, what it's supposed to be. I don't know what it actually is. Um, but it's fantastic. I'm, I, I've decided, I'm sure I'll convince myself otherwise, but I'm done paying 300 bucks for wax. That stuff is awesome. Uh, polymer net shield is a good thing to have. I still use this on all the door jams. Um, you can also use it on like, um, pla like black plastic and things like that too. And then the good old Adam's car soap. Uh, my dad, I was talking to him, he's like, oh, you need to get the new car soap. It smells so good. Um, so yeah, you're probably right, but I still have a gallon and a half of the old stuff. Um, so Adam's car soap, it's good stuff. Let me pause it and I'll grab the next shelf and promise I'm almost done. Uh, OptiCoat 2.0, I still have quite a bit of this. I use this on wheels. In, I used it on the, on the trim. Uh, the M3 looks good. Sort of good. Um, this will be one of my new experiments as well. I haven't used this, so you guys will learn with me um, for Alcantara. Again, I'm not really going to get it all that dirty, so I don't know how much work I need to do, but this is Sonax Alcantara Cleaner, and then this is Leather Master, Master's New Buck. So this is designed for, you know, Alcantara is a synthetic, a fake, like, suede, but real suede is, you know, the backside of, of leather. Um, that's what this is for. So I'm going to test these two out and see how they work. We got um, some clay. I always have a couple pieces of clay on hand. This is uh, like Auto Geek, whatever their generic crap is, clay um, in a Griot's container. Um, citrus, chemical has citrus wash, citrus red, uh, which is good for stripping the paint prior to a d detail or correction. 3M adhesive remover, th citrus base. This is good stuff to have laying around. This stuff is awesome, P21S polishing, polishing soap, the same guy who turned me on to CarPro Pearl, turned me on to this stuff. This is great for exhaust tips uh, or anything metal. It's like a, kind of like a soapy substance and they give you a little block. You wet this block and you, you put the, the polishing soap on there and it's a sort of a mildly abrasive stuff that's designed to clean up the funk on your exhaust tips. So you need to pick up, it's like 20 bucks, pick that up. A gallon of Micro Restore for cleaning the microfiber towels. I love this stuff. Griot's fine leather, not the new car, but the fine leather scent. And what I'll do, I'll show you this when I do it in interior detail, but I'll spray it. Just spray it on the carpet. Or you can spray it on a sponge and throw it under the seat. Just spray it on the carpet in a spot where your, your feet aren't going to touch. Soak it pretty good. This stuff smells great. And then you always got to have some 91% IPA laying around. Um, I'm sure you could get some 100% somewhere, but I just buy it from the, the drugstore or the, the grocery store. So that's some, some more stuff. Um, 
I would have one of these laying around in case you don't want to get the pressure washer out, Gilmore Foam Master 2, or if you don't have a pressure washer, this is what I used before I got a pressure washer. Adam's Detail Soap. It has like an A, B, C setting. Um, some will have a little, you know, a little bit more adjustable, but this is a cheaper version of foaming. Actually, Adams has some new foaming guns that I would probably buy before I bought that. Um, this thing is junk. I'm gonna have one of these. I don't know what you'll use it for, but I think it was like 50 bucks, so I keep it. Uh, but this is a pump foamer. I don't like it. I use these, oops, Adams blocks for detailing, for detail dressing for the tires. So I buy them at like two bucks a piece, which is crazy. I'm sure you could figure out some, some more elegant, much cheaper solution. Uh, but I'm lazy and probably have a little bit too much money these days. So I just buy them from Adams. I also have some of the Grios, little blue detail sponges as well. But I use this for the tires, and when they kind of get gummy, I just throw them out and, and redo it and, and uh, use, a, use another one. Um, uh, Auto Finesse products, good stuff to have laying around. Citrus Power, uh, which is good for getting bugs that just won't quite come off. Um, Obliterate, which you can use as a glue, tar and glue remover. Uh, and then Iron Out, which you'll use prior to a polish, so as, a, as, a de as the, the, the decon step. So that's the, that's the end of the, believe it or not, the end of the, 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 the products, the chemicals. Um, so, you know, you want to do it right. If you really wanted to save some money, you could just steal and do exactly what I use. Um, and you'd, you'd do just fine. I think I have a nice combination of products. Um, some things that I'd never really used a lot of, you know, Swiss Vax, um, uh, Chemical Guys. I know a lot of you guys like, like Ammo NYC. He's brilliant, great detailer. I'm just a guy, he's a, he's a pro. Um, you know, some of his products are probably better just going with an all-in-one system. Uh, Adams is a great all-in-one you know, company. You could do everything through them. You, I guess you could go generic out and go, go auto geek stuff, which, you know, isn't bad stuff. I use, I've used some of their stuff before at their place. I just like premium brands. I don't, I don't know why, you know, Wolfgang and whatever their other thing, DP, I forget what it's called. Their, their products are, you know, they're fine, um, but I like the specific, like companies like Menzerta, they make polish, that's what they do. So I use their polish. Um, I auto finesse kind of turns me off with their funky packaging, but um, makes me think of the Jersey Shore for some reason. But um, I, their stuff is really good, so I use some of their stuff. So I'm probably, I don't know, and, and please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars into detailing stuff, just from screwing it up. And um, you know, I don't buy a lot of other stuff. I, I, I buy cars and detailing supplies. I don't buy, obviously, I don't buy clothes. Um, you know, I don't buy watches. I don't buy, you know, expense. I, our house is nice, but you know, it's not anything. It's not a crazy house in comparison to the cars that I own. That you know, the house probably isn't on the same level as this ridiculous garage. Um, so I, you know, I'm pretty concentrated, and, and I, I like. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, I have a I make a great living, but you know, detailing products. If you're going to do it. Um, and you're, you're, if you get into it like I am, you're going to spend a lot of money. So what you could do is just find some goof like me online or, 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 or a guy like Larry at, at, at Ammo NYC and um, just choose somebody else's process as long as it works for you and just stick to it. So all this stuff I just showed you, you don't need all this stuff. I don't need all this stuff. Shoot, I just threw a bunch of stuff away. Um, but the stuff I have now, well, other than that plastic polish, I use all of it. Mm, maybe not, I don't use the wolf stuff. <laughs> so there's a few things that I'm still holding on to, but most of the stuff I've thrown away or given away um, that I don't use. But the problem is you have to buy it, try it, and then decide whether you're gonna use it or not. So that's, that's part of the process of figuring out a, you know, a good detailing supply 
um, uh, regimen or a, a, a grouping of products that, that, that you know and like. And I'm not done. I mean, I'm sure after I publish this video, 50 people are gonna tell me something that I need to try and I'm sure I'll indulge and buy it. Um, so you, you really need to understand that if you're gonna get into this, that it kind of can become an addiction. So if you're not an addictive personality like me, do a better job and just find a process that works and just stick with it. Um, you don't have to buy all the fanciest crap in the world to get, I know a lot of pros that don't, I don't mean, maybe I don't know them, but I know of a lot of pros that don't spend, they probably don't spend half as much as I do on this stuff. So um, luckily I'm you know, fortunate in life that I've you know, been afforded the ability to, to buy some of this crap and buy it and try it. So if you want to steal from my experience, as you can tell, I'm happy to share. I'll tell you what I think and, um, and you, can, you can steal it from me. You know what, because I'm probably already an hour into this video. Let's talk pads, towels, DAs, polishers. Um, let's talk about that. I'll make another video on that. Um, it's probably getting a little too long-winded now for you guys, um, and you probably have shut me off before we even get to this point. Um, but I'll make another video in a week or two about um, the other sort of tools that I use uh, with, you know, with, with wheel woolies and, you know, and things like that. Uh, and I've done some of that on some of the videos, but maybe it would be better if I broke that up and, and didn't just stand here and ramble about all of it all in one shot. Um, you guys might do a little better job at, uh, or, or, or I might do a little better job if I break it up and, and, and concentrate a little bit more on it. So those are the, the chemicals. I think I've gone through everything. Yeah, I'm sure I missed something, um, but uh, you know, stay tuned. I'm happy you guys are watching my stuff. <laughs> you know, I monetize, if you guys didn't notice, I monetize my YouTube channel. And uh, I think I've made $44 and 30 something cents thus far. And it's only in like six or eight days. So maybe I'm on to a way to get rich here in that I'm gonna stand in my goof garage and make goof videos for, for all you guys. But um, I appreciate you watching. It gives, enter you're entertaining me more, I'm certain more than, you're, than I'm entertaining you. Uh, and um, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm working on uh, developing a website. So, you know, feel free to, share ideas. I might make a video and explain to you what I'm thinking there. Uh, and uh, um, I've got a buddy who's a web developer, so I think I'm going to make a website, organize all this crap in one spot, and maybe try to get some cool free stuff out of it. I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.